sure that when we take a decision, everybody's been in uh, the meeting. Thanks very much. Dick, I'd like to welcome you here on a reasonable afternoon. Uh, hopefully we're not going too badly. Before I start the agenda proper, I've just got to inform you, maybe some of you already know, two of the called in applications, that's application number three, so that's 2020 stroke 0575, and application number four, that's 2020 stroke 1178. Both have been withdrawn by the applicants, so they've actually been taken out of the system. Um, Anybody with speaking rights have been informed in that regard, um, both councillors and everybody else. So what we've got in front of us this afternoon is two called in. Um, we have no confidential business. So I hate actually saying it should be a straightforward uh, meeting. Um, unfortunately, that's the time it could go skew with. But I'm sure with your help, which I normally get, um, you make it as smooth and painless as possible. Right, uh, I'll go straight into apologies, and I've got apologies from councillors O'Reilly, that's Tom, and uh, Thompson Earl. Any other apologies? And the chief executive just been informed, Alison. Um, I think Chris, Chris Smith may be late, or he may not be able to get here, so I think I'll just note his apology as well. Okay. On to item two, I have signed all the necessary minutes. Um, item three, has anybody got any declarations of interest to declare in regard to the business on the agenda today? No. Nope. We will then do uh, item four, and that's matters arising out of our meeting on the 18th of March, and I'll go through them for accuracy first of all. Well, th that's already been done. Uh, page one, just matters arising. Page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, Page 10, page 11, page 12, page 13, and page 14. Thank you very much indeed. Right, without further ado, we'll go on to item five on the agenda, and that's the uh, to deal with uh, called in applications. And application number one is LA10 bar 2020 bar 1263A, and it's for an illuminated advertisement board. Darren. Uh, okay, good afternoon, members. Um, so uh, the first application is LA10 2021263. Uh, so now well, before, getting... before you go any further, Marcus, your mic is not, uh, you're, you're muted now, thank you. Okay, Darren, sorry for that okay. interruption. No, okay, so uh, application one then is LA10 2020 1263. Uh, it's an application for advertising consent uh, for an illuminated advertisement board uh, by Mr. McNabb. And it's on the gable wall of number two, New Brighton Terrace in Oma. Um, so I'll take you through the, the details then on the screen, members. You can see the site location map then and it identifies the position of the site uh, in red, which is at the end of the terrace. Uh, the terrace faces onto the Kelvin Road, uh, which then runs up into John Street in Oma. Uh, just a block plan then to look a bit closer at the site. You can see it's at the end of the terrace, uh, adjacent to number two, um, with the sign then on the gable wall. So that's the existing elevations uh, of the end of the property. And you can see there's the extension to the rear with a flat roof on it and the two windows and then the two buttresses uh, supporting the gable wall and then the two DRD road signs or DFI road signs. And that's just a photograph then showing the uh, site as it is existing at the moment. So you can see the, uh, the extension to the rear has a pitch roof, sorry. Um, then you have the gable of the house and then the frontage of the terrace onto the main road. So the proposal then is for the new signs, 4.2 metres wide, by 3.5 metres in height, with an LED strip along the top, and it's approximately 2.5 metres above the ground level, so it's above the level of the pen display sign, as you can see there uh, on the plan. So that's a bird's eye view, so if you imagine you're looking down on top of the site, 
uh, you can see the top plan is the existing drawing, so the gable of the property then and the two buttresses, which are supporting the, the end of the property. And the proposal then is to put the sign on the uh, buttresses, and then there'll be a small area, a small gap on the right-hand side, which will be filled in by the, uh, the boarding uh, as included within the report. And that's the side view then. So you can see this is coming down from Gallows Hill, looking towards the property. And you can see the buttresses then, and the sign then is going to be on the affixed to those buttresses. From the opposite view then, so it's coming up the hill um, towards the site. You can see then the gable of the property there with the buttresses along in red there. So the sign then will be fixed onto the, the buttresses. Uh, and again, that's just to show you the, the photograph of the, the site as it stands. And then the elevation as proposed. Uh, during the application, there were discussions with the agent and he has sent in this plan uh, showing the uh, land use in the locality. And he's presenting the argument that it's not a residential area, that there are a number of commercial properties. So the buildings in red are identified by the agent as having a commercial use. Uh, the other properties then generally are in white would be residential in nature uh, and land use. So you can see our site number two is actually, uh, uh, it has been approved for change of use uh, and is no longer a dwelling. It is used as a, an office. Number six then is also changed and number 14 then is a, a last use as a cafe. And barbershop. Um, opposite the terrace, though, you can see it is all residential uh, and uh, Gallows Hill properties. Within the area plan, the site is identified as a, a protected housing area, and with the site then is identified by the end of the black arrow at the top of the screen. And you can see it's part of a large area of brown zoning, which is uh, designated to protect the area from uh, non residential uses essentially. So critical views, uh, members. So coming up past the Brothers School, I'm sure members will know this road if you've been in Noma. Uh, you drive up past the Brothers School up over the crest of the hill and down. The sign then will be on the end of the, the terrace and will not be seen uh, from that view at all. Coming from the opposite direction, so if you're up sort of where Sally's is in John Street there and you're coming down the Keldon Road towards the site, uh, if you imagine the views then as you come down just towards the site on that approach, and that's the views then that you have at the moment. So. You have Ladbrokes on the right hand side, the Velvet Lounge uh, on the right as well, and then you have a printing works um, in front of you. And you can see then New Brighton Terrace is, is directly in front of you as well. As we move along the road then, you can see opposite the site, on the right hand side, is all residential properties. And then you come to the actual site itself. Uh, although there is a commercial use within the property, it, it appears residential, as do uh, the uh, all of the houses or all the buildings fronting onto the road with only the sign uh, indicating that there's a commercial premise there. So as I said, the proposal is for the 4.2 metre by 3.5 metre high sign. And just to give you an idea of what approximately we will look at, this is an image I've created myself just for members' information, uh, to show the position of it on the wall. And that really is the drawing that has been submitted by the agent. So members, the recommendation then is to refuse. Uh, there are really two issues you'll note from the report. The first one is uh, that the sign is not fixed flush to the gable wall of the property, uh, but sits against the buttresses uh, and projects out about a metre from the gable. The gap to the side then is filled in with the dark grey al aluminium uh, to, to block the gap in. From the front and side views, the sign uh, will not relate well to the building uh, because it will sit out from the building on the buttresses and will be dominant and obtrusive in the landscape. The second policy concern then is the harm that the sign will do to the character and appearance of the area. The area is designated as an existing housing area in the area plan with policies to protect the area from undesirable effects of non-residential uses. Um, some properties as they have changed, but overall the character of this area remains residential. The policy for advertisements says poster panels are generally out of place in residential areas. Uh, and for the reason listed within the report, this sign would, would fail to meet the various policies. So the recommendation then is to refuse advertising consent for the reasons listed within the report. Thank you very much, Darren. Uh, we have representations from the agent and applicant. That's uh, the agent, Marcus Kerr, and the applicant, Charles McNabb. I know you're on uh, WebEx. I can see on the screen, uh, Marcus. Um, good afternoon. Hi. And Charles. Hi. 
Yep. Uh, hold on. I'll I'll just outline before I let you in because I'm not sure if you've actually been on Webex. Um, no. I know you, you know you haven't. Uh, look, I, the normal thing is uh, you've got up to ten minutes. Um, if you would introduce yourself, if you are only going to be speaking, Marcus, that's all right. If Charles McNabb is going to be speaking, he needs to introduce himself as well in front of the screen. And between you have ten minutes. Uh, if you don't use the ten minutes, that's okay. Uh, members then may or may not put some questions to you and then we'll go back to the planning officer for comments and then for a decision from the committee. Are you good enough to go, Marcus? Yeah, I'm fine, Robert, yeah. That's okay, right. I'm starting the clock now. If you do your introductions and head on, thank okay. you. Thanks very much, committee. Um, it's my first time on here, so hopefully it all goes smooth. Um, I'm Marcus Gare, the agent, and I have the applicant and Charles from Dab with me. Um, I'll probably do the speaking and ask you something to ask, uh, ask Charlie, you know. Um, we've made this application for the limited sign, as you can see on the gable wall on number two, Brighton Terrace. The proposed board is to be located on the gable wall. The gable wall at current is uh, an unsightly gable, as you can see from the pictures, uh, with two projecting buttresses. We propose to erect the advertising board over the buttresses and finish with a grey aluminium flashing around the perimeter of the board. This will create a flush fitting feel to the gable wall. I know Darren's alluding to maybe it projecting out, but um, I think when this is flashed around with a grey flashing, it will look like it's part of the building uh, and, and, and uh, it's not sort of projecting out a uh, standalone. This will uh, create the, the flush fitting feel, as I say. Planning policy PPS 17 is really the, the, the key context here, and it states that consent will be given for the display of an advertisement where it respects amenity when assessed in the context of the general characteristics of the locality, and it does not prejudice public safety. Paragraph 12 in the GNA attached to that states that gable mounted advertisement displays located on gables are a common feature in the predominantly commercial parts of our towns and cities and may offer benefits such as screening and untidy gables. So I just want you to note that as key point one, we are screening an untidy gable here. The main objection seems to be that the advertising board would have a negative effect on the character and streetscape. The main approach to the board would be, as Darren has said, coming down from uh, John Street uh, at Sally's or the Cobbler's Bar, you'd be coming down and uh, heading towards the Christian Brothers School. In our opinion, this part of the town is largely commercial, with post office buildings on the left, the computer repair shop on the left, and the Velvet Lounge, uh, public house, and bookmakers on the right hand side. Banner state in the report that this is a residential terrace, however, several of the properties along the terrace are commercial. Again, going back to my map with the red buildings marked on it. Um, you can clearly see that whilst it was probably initially a residential street, there is actually several of those properties which are now commercial, including the building which we're putting it on. This building is is actually uh, an office building. So whilst we accept that the opposite side of the road is largely residential, that's the Gallows Hill area, this side of the street is for the most part commercial. The gable wall is located at the main junction of the Kevlin Avenue, which leads to one of the main town centre car parks and is the gateway to the town centre. You will note that the DFI have no objections to the proposal. Um, we would like to point out that a similar advertising board is erected on a gable wall of a completely residential row of properties on the Dale Road, opposite the new police station. So if we take that as key point two, uh, I think that's a precedent that we've we've outlined there. That is a residential row, completely residential, and that sign is actually probably slightly bigger than what we're looking to erect. So we'll we'll keep that for uh, we'll keep that for discussion. Um, we'd also like to add finally just that in the current economic climate, and especially for our town centre business has been closed for the last year, we should be doing everything we can to promote the local businesses and the economic development of our town centre. We hope the council see fit to support this objective by granting approval of our proposal. Is that you finished, Marcus? Yes, that's me. Yeah. Yeah, just about four minutes. Well done. Uh, members?
Uh, anybody would like to pose any questions to Marcus in regard to the information he's just supplied you with? Uh, I don't see any takers, Marcus. So, okay. all is good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Well, it could. <laughs> uh, that's predetermination, Marcus. We haven't had the discussion yet. <laughs> so, uh, um, I'll go over to Darren, please, for yeah. comments. Uh, okay, members. So, um, as I said within the report, there the view of officers is the same; doesn't relate well to the building, um, and there's a difference of opinion really between ourselves and the agent here. Um, and what he's saying, um, officer's view is it doesn't relate well to the building um, on which it's positioned. It will be out of keeping with the character of the area, which uh, you know it does remain residential uh, in the view of officers uh, for the reasons stated. Uh, it will also dominate the approach uh, and harm the visual amenity of this area. Um, it's a residential character and appearance. Some of the buildings may be used for commercial uses, but it does look like a residential street. Uh, in terms of uh, precedence, I don't think there's really uh, any merit in, in, in that uh, approach because every sign will be looked at differently. This site is different from all other ones um, that are around the town. Um, and there are other examples of sites that have been refused uh, advertising consent. Uh, so I think really it needs to be looked at on its merits rather than simply saying there's another one somewhere else got approval. Um, so for the reasons listed, this one would be contrary to policy. Uh, and therefore, the view of officers, it should be refused. Thanks, Darren. Uh, I've got two questions to councillors coming up. Councillor Dehan, Josephine, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I wonder if uh, Darren could please uh, put up the photograph of the approach to the application site from John Street. Yeah, um, I see. Um, you know, what I see here is the point really that Mr. Clare has been uh, making that uh, to uh, the right of this picture, you see there's quite a few commercial properties um, here. But but uh, is that a large advertisement sign that I see in blue on the gable mm -hmm. of that house up to the left? Yeah, so that's the OMA printing. I can't quite yeah, read it, same. it says OMA. Yeah, Oma Printing Com is a, um, a printer's shop there, just in that building. Uh, um, and is that investment attached to the building, it to is, the gable yes. wall? Yes. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I would appreciate uh, the planning officer's comments on the fact that the the uh, hoarding the sign will be erected at the entrance to Kevlin Avenue, which really is the commercial heart of the town. There's two large car parks there and a lot of commercial buildings. And uh, also, you know, realistically, I would describe this area as, uh, you know, mixed use because, yes, we, we do have residential properties, particularly uh, to the right side of the road. There are a lot of commercial buildings here and there is a large school there. So, um, I mean, I, I feel that this is a mixed use area and I would welcome Darren's comments on that. Chair, thank you. Yeah, I think the um, just the agent's map then is very helpful here. So you can see the the site is identified there at number two, just at the end of the terrace. Um, and then the terrace then is number two to number 14. So you can see there are a significant number of properties along there and the vast majority are all residential. Uh, there has been approval for some changes of uses and some long established uses within those buildings. But as you look at them, and uh, I think you can see there from the photograph, you know, that does appear as a residential street. There is one sign, I think, for the dentists, but the end property, which is an office, uh, doesn't have any signage on it or anything to really indicate that it is commercial. Uh, so the overall, the, the, the terrace appears residential. Now, the very top up where the black car is, is not. Uh, there's a, a an old shop used to be up there, um, and there's a barber's, I think. But as I say, the terrace is residential in character and appearance. And if we go back to the the plan, so you can see then the terrace is residential in character. Opposite the terrace uh, is Gallows Hill Development, as it's called, and it's a Patrick's Court and Spatics Terrace, and that's all residential. So really, I'd agree with what the agent's saying. And so far as as you come down Kelvin Road, you are coming out of the commercial area of Oma. And you're coming past the various businesses, but you come to the the end of those, uh, and then you have our terrace, which is the residential area. 
and it does appear residential. The brother's school then is over the top of the hill, so you can't really see it from, from this location. But there's a definite break as you go down the Kelvin Road at our site where the character changes from commercial to residential. May I ask a supplementary, Chair, please? Of course you can, Josephine. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Darren, for that. Um, in his presentation, Mr Kerr makes the point that the uh, uh, gable in question where the advertisement is to be erected is unsightly. And I presume that the, the two buttresses on that gable wall are to support uh, the structure. Um, so really, uh, it would be difficult to erect a hoarding here or an ad uh, advertisement board uh, without really um, attaching it to those buttresses, uh, in my view. So would Darren accept Mr Kerr's assertion that, you know, when he um, uh, attaches the flashing, the grey flashing, that, uh, you know, the visual impact uh, uh, on the gable wall uh, will be will be minimised and it will seem to be more incorporated into the structure of the building. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so, so um, members, just to be clear, there's, there's two issues going on here, uh, and you can see those clearly within the planning report. The, the first one is that the sign will be affixed to the buttresses, so it'll sit out from the actual gable of the property and then have the flashing on the side to fill that gap in. So that's considered to be you know, unacceptable and harm the immunity of the area. The second issue then is that overall the sign on the end of the building will change the character and appearance of the area uh, and introduce this commercial element into an area that is residential. So the two things are going on here. In terms of putting the sign on to the end of the building, yes, it will screen the buttresses uh, and cover them up, but the ivy that's growing up there and the appearance of it is really due to the you know the building not being maintained and looked after. If that was all removed and tidied up and the grass cut and kept clean, then it wouldn't be untidy and wouldn't be unsightly. So. Uh, I don't accept that the uh, the sign would overcome the the issues uh, that the agents uh, raising in support of the application. Thanks very much, Darren. Um, second speaker, Councillor Garrity, Mary. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, and I suppose, Darren, just a quick question because I know you have to collectively come back and make um, a judgment on each planning and. As you rightly said, it's a difference of opinion between yourself and the agent here. And I would imagine it'll be a difference of opinion within the planning group that we have ourselves here. I would be minded to be on uh, the view of the agent on this on this one. I think um, when I go into that part of town, I don't see it as a residential at all. I think people are going into that car park and it's very much for other uses, and I do know there is a barber's up on that street, and this has been alluded to that has now been used as a business as end property. But uh, my question is, Darren, was it a unanimous? Um, did all of the planners come to think it was a residential area? Because, um, or was there a mixed op um, opinion on that one? Um, firstly, secondly, I note that there was no objections, and I know the agent did say, you know, in the time it's in it, I think we as a council have to do all we can to support businesses and uh, the town centre and the town, and indeed anyone out of the town that we can. And if this will go somewhere, it is a prime location, I'll not. You know, for for any advertisement, it's definitely up there with 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 the best them. But I'd be minded that uh, this should be something we'd need to um, work with the agent for. I certainly would be on their side on this one. Um, just putting it out there because I think we have to do all we can to help. But was it unanimous that all the planners thought it was residential, or was there a, a debate in that, Darren? Um. So, Councillor, I'm not I'm not averse to answering questions, but I don't um, think that it's appropriate that uh, I should answer that question. Uh, and the reason for that is that it's not a material consideration. It's not relevant to your determination as to whether the view of officers was unanimous or not. What's being presented to you is a recommendation from the planning department, and that's what you have to make your decision on. Uh, if there was an inference that it wasn't unanimous uh, and that was to be seen to be affecting your judgment, then that may leave the council open to a challenge uh, on the case. So, with respect, uh, I'd ask that you know I don't I'm not required to answer that question. Uh, in terms of working with the agent, I think what the agent has done here is is design the scheme as best he can to fit the site. Uh, he has left the window opening, uh, you know, and I'm sure he would have wanted to make a bigger sign uh, across the left hand side, but that would have screened and covered the window. So he has designed as best he can, I think, to fit the the building. Uh, given the limitations of the width of the gable. 
Um, so I really don't think there's anything more that planning could suggest or we could go back to to discuss with the agent on this one, really. It's just the view of members is, is for decision. Oh, Chair, just okay, I accept that, Darren, and just as suppose I did indicate I wasn't going to be swayed mm -hmm. by, by the answer, even if you had to give it, I'd give my position on it prior. Um, um, I just uh, think it's, it is one that will divide maybe people, but I certainly wouldn't be in agreement with the recommendation on this uh, one at present anyway. So, thanks, Chair. Thank you, Mary. Um, anybody, uh, any other members, any questions posed or Darren? If you could take your hand down, Mary, please. Thank you. Uh, Darren, I've just got a couple of points for clarification. Um, you have two policy issues here uh, that I, I know it's one recommendation for refusal, but you've highlighted two policy issues coming to the same. Uh, the first one basically uh, is the size uh, and the way um, it goes around the gable to hide the buttress. So, and the second one basically is the adverse sign that the uh, adverse impact that the sign has upon the character of the nature. On the second one, um, can I ask, is any sign then going to impact upon the policy, no matter the size, shape or position? Has any discussion taken place in that regard with you and the applicant agent? Uh, on on this particular site, the the question yeah. for the that planners have have sort of viewed is that a reduction wouldn't make any difference. Uh, right. What is what is before you is is for determination. As I say, had the agent covered the window on the left hand side, we would have gone back maybe and asked if that could be left open. But as you can see from the plans, you know he has designed it so that it leaves the window opening. Uh, which is what the policy requires, and he has just made best use of the space that's there. He's constrained by the window and the pen display sign at the bottom, so you know he has designed it to fit the shape that's available to him. So, really, officers didn't go back and ask for any changes to that. We did let him know the issues, and he came back with the land use map. Yep, that's okay. No, I, I mean just from a purely personal point of view, um, if you try and work within the buttresses and don't cover the buttresses. Um, with a sign, you would have an elongated, tall, long sign. Um, I'm just wondering, hypothetically. Yeah. What I would that? Uh, I'll be honest. I, I'm you can't. You can't. I know that. That's okay. That's. <laughs> I don't, I I don't. It's 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 to be honest that uh, a narrow, thin, narrow strip on on the wall between the buttresses, um, I don't think would give a great appearance either. I'll be honest. Yeah. Uh, this this one would be a better that's, appearance. Be yeah. Honest. That's fair enough. So, right, members. Uh, Councillor Dehan, Joseph, are you coming back? You're muted. No, I just want, wanted to make a proposal, Chair. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, you go ahead with the proposal. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Well, uh, thank you, Darren, for your presentation, and to, thanks to Mr. Kerr as well. Um, I, I am quite clear in my mind, Chair, that the uh, area in question uh, is not purely a residential area. I agree with uh, Councillor Garrity that, you know, it is definitely uh, um, uh, at least uh, mixed use, if not uh, uh, commercial, certainly going down into uh, Kevlin Avenue. That is the commercial heart of the town. Um, I do accept what Mr. Kerr says about uh, supporting the local economy and local businesses and would support Councillor Garrity again in her comments regarding that. So I don't believe that uh, this advertisement would detract substantially from the, uh, the character of the area, because when I look at the photographs presented, I see lots of commercial buildings and I do see that big blue advert for OMA printing uh, just, just proximal to the application site. In respect of the, uh, the dimensions and presentation of the advertisement itself, um, I think uh, whilst this is a prime advertisement site, I think the buttresses on uh, the gable of the building uh, uh, do um, uh, present some some difficulty, and I I feel that the the uh, agent uh, and the designer have gone as far as they can to uh, uh, re reduce the impact of the appearance of this uh, board. I am uh, convinced that with the 
uh, grey flashing surrounding the advertisement that it would merge substantially with the gable wall. And if the uh, uh, rest of the gable wall and the uh, area in front of it were tidied up, I think that it would not uh, be too obtrusive uh, uh, at that site. So on, on that basis, Chair, I wish to propose that we do not agree with the officer's recommendation, but that we should approve this planning application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Do I have a seconder or any other proposals? Through the chair, I'll second, Robert. That's okay, Mary. Um, Councillor Rainey, you wanted to come in? Alan? Alan, yep. Go ahead, Alan. Uh, chairman, not, not necessary, but I just wanted to add my support for this year. Uh, in my opinion, this is clearly a mixed use, and I'm very happy to support it. Uh, thank you. Just a uh, Purely a comment from the chair as well. I think uh, whilst the ad is on the gable of the terraced houses, it should be noticed, I suppose, that the terraced houses is on the edge of the designated residential area. And coming down the hill, you do not see the advert, but going up the hill, I think the critical view, uh, because it's on the gable, there's a tendency to read the advertisement with Kelvin Avenue and the commercial buildings on the left and also on the right. So I, I would agree with the proposal. Um, that said, sorry, I shouldn't be spouting off from the chair. I've got a proposer and a seconder. Um, are we all in agreement, members? Any uh, abstentions or um, opposing opinions? None. I take that as unanimous. Thank you very much indeed. Darren? OK, uh, so members, the recommendation was to refuse advertising consent. Uh, members have granted advertising consent. Uh, um, for the reasons stated. Uh, in terms of conditions, members, could I ask just the authority to in include conditions as delegated back to officers, just so we can agree the wording with the agent uh, about the provision of the aluminium uh, flashing on the side? Uh, uh, I get that agreed. That's okay. Josephine and Mary, do you mind adding that into your proposal then to go against the recommendations to allow? Uh, I, yep. I would accept that, Chair. Yep. And Are you happy, Mary? Content too, Chair. Thank you. Yep. Everybody content with that? Right, thank you very much indeed. We'll move on now to application number two, uh, just to get my paperwork, and that's LA 2020 stroke 1299, and it's for uh, two infill dwellings with domestic garages. We have speaking rights, and we have speaking rights. We'll deal with those as we go through. I'll hand over to Darren now. Thank you. Okay, members, so application two then is LA 10 2020-1299. Uh, it's an outline application by Mr. McLaughlin on the Laurel Bank Road, uh, Ballinahattie and Oma, for two infill dwellings uh, and two garages. Uh, the recommendation then is to refuse plan permission for the reasons listed within the report and subject to four reasons. So on the screen then, members, is the uh, site location map. And you can see the site is the red rectangle in the centre of the plan. And it runs parallel with the Laurel Bank Road. Uh, the other properties then nearby are included on the plan, along with additional land then in the control of the applicant in blue. And the agent has helpfully sent in a block plan uh, showing the uh, sort of the concept for the site. So you can see the site is in the centre with the green rectangle and the purple coloured rectangle, and those are annotated as site one and site two, with the access then shown by the red triangles. So it'll be a paired access coming in off the Laurel Bank Road. Other buildings in the locality, then you can see on the left is number 26. And it's accessed then off the Laurel Bank Road with a garage to the rear. On the right then is number 30, which accesses in off the Ballinahattie, or sorry, the Laurel Bank Road as well. You then have the, the Ballinahattie Road to the right-hand side, and then number 140, um, which accesses onto the Ballinahattie Road. And then the other properties then, 143, 145, et cetera, uh, um, they're onto the Ballinahattie Road and are across the road from the site. So in terms of the uh, policy issues, uh, you can see from the report members that the critical issue here is that the application is proposed as an infill. So to be an infill, there has to be a line of three or more buildings along a road frontage. So at the moment, you have number 26 at the top of the site, and you have number 30, and the site's in between those. So those two buildings, 26 and 30, both have a common frontage to the road, and therefore there are two buildings, two dwellings. 
The only other buildings in at, at number 26 is a garage at the rear, um, but it's in behind the property, so it doesn't have a frontage to the road, and that would be a consistent approach then with other decisions and applications that have come before members uh, at the committee. So there really only are two buildings with a common frontage onto the Laurel Bank Road. The Ballinahattie Road then is identified by the black line, and it runs in a sort of north-south direction. You can see number 140 then has a frontage on the Ballinahattie Road on two sides, so it has the northwest frontage and it has a, a southwest frontage with the garden area coming down to the road. So that property is split from the Laurel Bank Road by the Ballinahattie Road, and therefore there it does not have a frontage on to the Laurel Bank Road. Uh, and you can see that then clearly on the on the concept plan shown by the agent, number 30 then has a frontage onto the Laurel Bank Road and the Ballinahattie Road, and number 140 has the same onto the Ballinahattie Road. And the policy requires a common frontage onto the public road, which is the Laurel Bank Road. That is split there by the red line. So if we take some views in, members, so if you imagine you're standing at the yellow star uh, and you're looking then towards the Laurel Bank Road and the uh, down to the left, the site then is slightly down the road on the right hand side is the green field. And that's the view then, standing at that junction, the Laurel Bank Road on the left-hand side and the Ballinahattie Road is on the right-hand side. And you can clearly see the number 140 is split from the frontage on the Laurel Bank Road. So moving down the Laurel Bank Road, this is number 30. You can see the house set back on the raised land with the access coming down onto the road and the garden area at the front. You then look towards the application sites and you can see number 26 then further along the road and the site's end of the green field between the two properties. So as a view then looking in through the existing field gate towards the properties or the sites. Then as you go on up the road and you turn and face back towards the sites, you can see on your left is number 26, and then there's a laneway in the hedge line um, with the sites then the other side of the hedge line. Uh, and that's another view then moving back towards the Ballinahaddy Road Junction and the site centre on our left-hand side. So I'll say the critical issue uh, in terms of the policy issues is that number uh, 140 Ballinahaddy Road does not have a common frontage uh, onto the Laurel Bank Road as required by the policy. So if you're standing at the yellow star looking towards number 140, that's the view you can get there. So you can see the property uh, sitting on the raised platform. The road bends around two sides and it has a frontage to those two sides. That's the frontage on the Ballinahaddy Road. And then that's the frontage on the side. And as you can see, there's a pedestrian entrance there. The other properties then, um, on the other side of the Ballinahaddy Road, so 143 and then further along the road, you can see those are on the, across the road uh, and they, uh, they are not then part of the gap between which you can then fill as part of the infill policy. So the proposal then uh, is currently the policy as the development is not a small gap sufficient to only accommodate up to a maximum of two houses within a substantial and continuously built up frontage. The proposal is currently the policy and the proposal would, would have permitted result in the creation of ribbon development along Laurel Bank Road. And number three, the proposal is currently the policy and the two buildings would have permitted result in a suburban style build up of development when viewed with the existing buildings and result in a detrimental change to the real character of the area. And number four then is the overall policy. There's no overriding reasons why this development is essential in this rural location and could not be located within a settlement. Right, thanks very much, Darren. We have representations now from the planning agent, followed by representations from two objectors, followed by representations from Councillor Stephen McCann. Uh, he's back on the podium again. Uh, we'll take it. Uh, Paul Bradley, are you connected? Yes. Paul, I, I don't think you presented through WebEx possibly before, no, have you? No. No, that's okay. Hopefully you were listening in to what I was saying to Marcus on the previous application. Yes, that's fine, yeah. Yep. What I'm going to say is now you have 10 minutes, maximum of 10 minutes. I'll time you when you're ready. If you do your introductions, you can go straight in. Uh, I would advise you that I'm not accepting or it's not acceptable to put any new information in front of the committee, only that information that you've already provided to our officers. Um, as I said, after you, um, there may be questions put to you, the objectors will come in. You have a right of response back to the objectors, if you just bear that in mind, okay? 
Yes. You have, you have no um, right of response back to Stephen Mc, Councillor McCann. He's only making representation. It, there's no questions in that. So look, that explained. Are you ready to go? If you could do yes. an introduction, right? Yeah. I am just about to start. Um, Okay, away you go. Hello, my name is Paul Bradley from Building Design Solutions. I'm here with the applicant that's beside me. I'd um, like to firstly thank the committee for calling in this application and giving it due consideration. Um, I would like to read on about the planning report provided to the committee. Fully accept this site is sufficient to accommodate two suitably designed houses and policy C2I8 allows for this so long as it respects in the existing development pattern along the site frontage. The main reason for a negative recommendation from planning is that they've only considered the buildings for, for along the Laurel Bank Road. The buildings after the junction with the Balnahari Road have been discounted in totality, despite the very clear common frontage that exists along what is a stretch of two roads, just because they're separated by name doesn't mean the time I just doesn't run straight through. The report in front of you all states number 140 does not have any shared frontage with Laurel Bank Road and fronts on the Balnahari Road. Furthermore, it also has a pedestrian access out onto this very clear frontage. Just because there's a change in road name after the junction, it doesn't mean that there isn't a common frontage along the same stretch of road. The stretch of road is actually commented on by the planning report where the case officer mentions a stretch of road. There are only two, there are only two roads in name only. When you're traveling towards Oma from basically coming from west to east, you can actually drive straight through the junction as if you're driving along one road. You don't have to go up around the Ballinahari Road, which they're referring to as a split. When you come from the other direction, there isn't suddenly an imaginary wall or border post that stops you seeing the common frontage through and through. You stand both sides of the road, you can see the frontage of Balnahari and Laurel Bank as if they're one frontage. Now, they're also beyond 140. There is an old school, there are old buildings, and there's a total of five separate buildings. And of all of the five, there are three dwellings. The policy states that there should be three or more buildings along the road frontage and it's acceptable for a gap. We have five. It does not state that the buildings have to be along one road and then we start counting again just because the road name changes. It's still along the same stretch of road. Road service have no objections to this application. Representations have been made with concerns about our proposal including comments and accuracy if the old building has been shown in maps we can only use the latest maps provided to us by Ordnance Survey, and we're not responsible for what is marked on them. However, as stated in the case officer's report, um, he is basically saying all concerns have been fully considered in light of plan and policy, and there's no adverse reasons why this proposal would not be expect, ex acceptable. Despite the representations, they're basically fully covered by plan and policy. This proposal would fully absorb in the historical area of Balnahari by a natural rounding off of the existing buildings around the Balnahari Junction. Number 26 would actually bookend the settlement very nicely and creating Balnahari like a small settlement. In conclusion, I had asked a very simple question to the committee. If you were all to stand 50 or 60 metres on either side of that junction on the east to west line, the, the same stretch of road, the appearance of a substantially built frontage would not change just because the road name has changed. And you have to look at that very clearly. If you stand either side of that junction, you can still read the two frontages together. The tarmac just doesn't stop with a wall in between. Planning consideration of the application is mostly about visual appearance. And this stretch of road frontage reads as one and the same either side of the junction and the site clearly respects the existing development pattern along the road frontage and we'd respectfully request that the committee approve this proposal on this basis. Thank you. Thank you very much Paul. Um, well within the time just slightly over four minutes. Members you have the opportunity now to pose questions to Paul if you want. If you could indicate please.
Right to up, uh, Councillor Garrity, Mary. Thanks, Chair, and uh, thanks, Paul, for, for that report uh, on it. I just have one question. I know you have indicated your feeling on it and, and the road breakage and where, in your opinion, it's not relevant, and I accept that, but I'm just looking at the reasons for refusal, and I just don't think you might have touched on the point before, and that's probably one that the discussions you'd had with your applicant, why the, this is essential in this location, um, just to the applicant. So if you could maybe touch on that for me, just please. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, um, Balnhari, while historically is a settlement, it had a former Presbyterian church, post office and school, national school all located at it. It unfortunately is not within the home area plan as being a settlement limit. Therefore, we can only look at this based on um, plan policy 21, PPS 21, sorry. And the only exception in the rule in this circumstance is under CTY 8. So we can't willingly just go and build in the settlement limit because this is not a settlement limit around Balnahari. It's only a historical settlement. So the only policy open in this circumstance is under uh, infill sites. Lovely. Thanks for that, Chair. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Councillor Dehan, Josephine. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bradley, for your, your report. Um, I think a key element in deciding this planning application will centre around uh, what constitutes a common frontage. Now, in respect of that, you made reference to the case officer's report, I think in respect of maybe number 40, uh, Balnahati Road. I wonder if you could expand on that a little bit, Mr. Bradley. Thank you. Yes. Um, number 140, um, it actually states in the report that it has common frontage on the the Balnahari Road, both to the south and to the east. So, if you're realistically standing at the front of number 30 and looking towards the junction, you can see very clearly there is a shared frontage with number 30's frontage and number 140's frontage. If you're standing at that view, which I noticed the planners have very conveniently not showed to yourselves, they've showed a view every direction but that direction. But when you're standing at number 30 looking towards the junction, you're looking at road verges that run straight through as if the road runs through. If you look at the aerial images and all the maps, it actually looks more like that road runs through the Laurel Bank, runs straight through the Ballinahari. Just because there's a turn in the Ballinahari road, they seem to make all of a sudden that this is a massive split on the road. But when you're standing looking east to west, both directions, this looks like one common frontage, no matter how you look at it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Okay. No further questions. Right. Um, two objectors. Um, Catherine, Miss Catherine Harper uh, first, and then Mr. Mark McGuigan. Um, lady and gentlemen, you have five minutes between you. Um, Catherine, you are first on my list, so you will be called first. After two and a half minutes, I will tell you it's time out. And then I'll call upon Mark, um, start his time, and he has two and a half minutes to finish off. Um, we can ask questions as the committee, uh, and the agent has the right of response, uh, first of all, back. Uh, Paul, you have the right to respond, but not to actually pose questions to the objectors, OK? OK, thank you. Uh, we, 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 as a committee, have the right to actually pose questions to the objectors. So that said, Catherine, I, I can see you. Are you ready to go? Could you unmute yourself? Yes, yes. Now, just give me a second to get my stop cock, uh, stopwatch <laughs> uh, sorted out. If you could introduce yourself and then go straight in, you have two and a half minutes from now. Go ahead. Thank you, Frozen. You're not coming through. No. Sorry, <clears throat> Chair, yeah. I think Catherine has some issues with her broadband connection. Right. Is that Mark? Yes. Yeah. Mark, Catherine, Catherine, I'm cutting across you. We can't hear you, Catherine. Can you unmute yourself? 
No. Darren, can you inform Catherine? She's not coming through. No, I, I can't even, I can't do it even from here. Yeah. Can you, can you unmute her from there? All right. Mark, C Catherine, we couldn't hear you at all. Whatever was wrong with your broadband width, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in now and ask Mark to pretend for two and a half minutes and then come back to you. And if you can, if we can hear you, we can hear you. If we can't, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. Mark, are you ready to go? I'll just reset my timer here, Chair. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm going to do the same thing. You do the okay. introduction um, and then go through. Hold on. <laughs> No, Catherine, no, don't come in yet. Right, okay, Mark, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, everybody, for allowing me to speak uh, this afternoon. Um, as I sit here in my, at my desk uh, to speak to you, I'm looking directly out at the proposal that um, you've got in front of you for this residential development, which is not even half a football pitch away from my living room window. Um, this ha there is no infill within this this proposal the properties that we talk about is my property and Catherine's pro property which doesn't even have clear uh, line of sight um this property will overshadow my house and it will look directly into my living room and my master bedroom the layout of the drawings are deliberately misleading there's a clear split in the uh, on the balnahari road um and the um agent may need to visit the site in order to see the um, appearance of the site because he doesn't appear to understand that there is no buildings where he has indicated on his drawings. There, um, a strategy of the PPS 21 is to conserve and enhance the environment. This residential development will do neither. Balnahari has been a historical settlement since the 1800s and has changed little to this, this, uh, um, to this day. This proposal will change the character completely, resulting in a street akin, akin to a suburban area. The residential development will result in an increase in noise and activity in this rural environment. This development will not be characteristic of this area, which is compromised of detached dwellings, but is actually more characteristic of a residential development inside a settlement. Under the QDA, QD1 of the PPS7, that design and layout of residential development should draw upon the positive aspects of the character of the terrain areas. PPS 7 refers to all residential developments with the exception of the proposal for one development. As this proposal is for two dwellings with a paired access and not a single dwelling, then PPS 7 applies. Accordingly, the proposal should be refused as it also fails to meet policy QD1 of PPS S7 and also 20 seconds regards, left and also with regards to the PPS 21 outlined by the planning authority thanks for listening thanks very much indeed mark i'm going to go back now to catherine catherine can you hear me again can you hear me yes the, the problem was hold on the problem was whilst you weren't you weren't muted your broadband width was that low that nobody could hear you. So you were talking away. You, you thought we were hearing you. We weren't, but we can hear you now. Yeah. Right. Go ahead now. You have two and a half minutes. Okay. The case officer has got the arguments and recommendations spot on. I, it is not a gap site. It's not a substantially built up road frontage, and it would lead to ribbon development where none exists, bringing a suburban feel to a very rural area. After all, you don't live in the countryside to live in a street. There's nearly 140 metres between my house and the settlement area of Balnahati. It is a historic settlement that once contained a church, a school and a pub, and is set on the edge of the Owen Ray across by a listed historic stone bridge. I my, and my neighbours would dearly like to see this rural character remain intact and be protected and not ruined by extending out into the rural countryside. There's no visual connection between my house and this historic settlement, as there is a bend in the road, mature trees on an old laneway, and the road junction at the end of Laurel Bank, where it meets Balnahati Road at a 90 degree bend. This sharp bend is a strong visual as well as physical break, i.e. you have to stop your vehicle. There's no established road frontage of the three or more houses that is required under your planning policy, 
and the maps that were produced for this application are misleading. In filling the space between the historic settlement of Balnahari, my house would create a suburban type road frontage, which to my mind is ribbon development. So I strongly agree with the planner's recommendation that this is not a gap site and should be refused. I cannot see how this development would fit in with the local area. The homes along Laurel Bank Road are spread out, giving everyone that lives along the road their privacy, and most importantly, providing visual breaks which maintain the rural character that is really appreciated in the area. My home is farther enough along the road to be identified as a separate and single dwelling in the countryside and is visually distinct from neighbours. Clearly, any attempt made to link our properties would substantially alter the rural feel to our homes by increasing the density of housing. I believe it is important to maintain the existing gaps in order to preserve the locality. I do also feel there'd be a loss of privacy and that having neighbours so close would lead to an increase in noise and disturbance. And 30 seconds left. In the way I do now. I really value the peace and quiet and greenery of a rural site. In conclusion, I feel strongly, as do my neighbours, that developing this agricultural field is not appropriate to the location as it would significantly alter the rural feel of the area by creating ribbon, ribbon development and negatively impact the established character of the neighbourhood by creating a built up environment. I hope I've managed to convey the concerns about the development and you'll take the issues raised into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Well rehearsed. You've done it within the time. Thank you. <laughs> Paul, uh, you have a right of response. Do you wish to take that up? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead. Basically, the majority of the concerns that the neighbours have raised here today have already been uploaded and considered by the planning report that has been presented to the committee. The case officers actually set out very well how all of these concerns are met under plan policy. And this debate on this application is really down to whether or not the common frontage along this stretch of road, I'm taking that from his report, we're not talking about a road suddenly changing. The plan officer has more or less set aside that if this is considered that the is a continuous build up if you're driving along this road, therefore this plan application is acceptable despite the representations from the neighbours. The policy allows for small gap sites within the countryside. And one thing that seems to keep coming up is about the inaccuracy of the maps. These maps, anybody can go on to Ordnance Survey, Spatial NA, or anywhere. Mm -hmm. That are the maps that are readily available. We have not changed them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, members, you have the opportunity to pose any questions you want to the two objectors. Could you indicate if you want to? No, I don't see anybody. Thank you. I've got now Councillor McCann. Stephen, are you ready to go? Yes, Chair, thank you. Yeah, hold on, I'll just get the um, timer ready. Okay. You're an old hand at this, but could you still just say who you are? Yes, of course. Uh, Go ahead. McKeon, West Tyrone here, speaking on support of the applicant. So, good afternoon to you all. Well, I believe certainly that this uh, application does indeed meet the policy tests of CTY8, and I fully support the applicant here this afternoon. I believe from looking at the report and uh, listening to the agent here that the crux of the argument today is around frontage to the road. Uh, is a very be second now, I can't read my own writing. So it's in relation obviously to the frontage along the road. So it is uh, and it's clear that this that these buildings all share that common road frontage which satisfies policy CTY8 requirements. And this particular application the road frontage happens to be allocated two names, even though it's one continuous piece of road with no junctions, no, no deviations from that road. Now, one can take a very forensic interpretation of this policy and determine this road as two roads, or one can take a more holistic approach and recognise that this stretch of road and the buildings that front this road meet CTY8 in terms of the road frontage, as it is, as I said, one continuous piece of road. The frontage of Lord Bank and Ballin the Happy Road is a shared frontage. And I suppose as councillors and members, you know, we need to take on board what the spirit of the policy dictates and you know, trying to accommodate people who are trying to build in the rural area and the restrictions that they face by that nature. So this policy, you know, it's not designed to be forensic. You know, we should look at like what the policy is trying to trying to achieve here and the overall arch and spirit of that policy. And in doing so, you would view this particular road as one road frontage. 
Some comments have been made in relation to the size of the site and its capacity to accommodate two dwellings, but it's been established that this is in fact a suitable gap site, and that's acknowledged by our planners in the report. I think that's it all. Uh, Chairman, you know, uh, that's me. Thank you. That's okay. Under two minutes. Well done, Stephen. You're getting used to this. Thank you. I will go on now to Darren to sum up. Uh, okay, members. So uh, the application is being presented to you for a uh, decision um, with the recommendation within the report and the four reasons. Um, members can explore all of the issues uh, that are being presented today. So um, it's not limited solely to the reasons for refusal, members. Um, if there are other issues you wish to discuss and go through, uh, or additional reasons for refusal, obviously that is within your right to to look at those, and you can add those in if you want. Uh, alternatively, if you feel that the the application meets the policy, then you know you can you can approve. So, just to be clear on that point, in terms of the issues that have been presented um, and set out in the report, uh, officers are largely content that the development will not impact uh, adversely upon the neighbours and won't harm their amenity. Uh, in terms of overlooking or overshadowing um, due to the separation distances and the orientations of the, the buildings that are proposed. Conditions can be included to ensure there's no windows overlooking neighbours, etc. Um, so there wouldn't be any issues in relation to, to the impact and harm to their amenity. The sole issue for the planners uh, is the fact that there are not three buildings uh, along the road, uh, as set out in the report and the presentation. Um, and you have a difference of opinion, uh, as often happens, uh, between ourselves and what the agent is saying, uh, members. So, really, I'd refer you to the comments in the report uh, and the recommendation then to refuse. Thank, Thank you very much, Darren. Uh, Councillor Dehan, Josephine. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Darren, for your summation. I, I just wanted to inquire. Um, the crux of this matter is whether we can consider the Laurel Bank Road and Balnahati Road as uh, being a single unit. Mr. Bradley, in his presentation, uh, does uh, stress to us uh, that uh, the, the, the road reads as one, uh, even though the roads have different names. But that, um, the, you know, the roads read as one. Well, unfortunately, we don't have a photograph uh, showing, uh, um, you know, how that might be uh, interpreted. But Mr. Bradley seems quite clear, and Councillor McCann seems quite clear that uh, the Balnahan road for 40 has pedestrian access, does read indeed with Laurel Bank Road. So I would just appreciate Darren's comments on that, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, if I just go back, the I say the agent's concept plan uh, is very useful, members. So you can see the the crux of the argument being presented by the agent uh, and conjured ourselves is that Bally number one hundred and forty Bally Nahadi has a frontage onto the road, and that road uh, is uh, extending along number twenty six, number thirty, and one hundred and forty. Uh, Officer's view is that the policy requires the gap to be infilled along the road, and therefore there's a, the, the, the Laurel Bank Road is the road they're talking about, and that's where the gap should be. Um, the number 140 Ballinahaddy Road has the frontage on the Ballinahaddy Road. It doesn't have a frontage on the Laurel Bank Road, and that is the difference between this site and many others which have come before you members, and that all the others have had the frontage on to the same road. So there's a difference of opinion, members, between ourselves and what the agent is saying. Could I ask a supplementary, please, Chair? Yeah, go ahead, Josephine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, Chair, if that yellow, looking at that map, and if that yellow star uh, were to be moved to the right, uh, you know, uh, on down the Bal the Balnahati Road, you know, the Balnahati Road bends round. You were to take that yellow star uh, further to the right, you know, looking at the road, even though the road has two different names, it seems like a very straight road to me. Uh, uh, the Balnahati Road uh, uh, merging with the Laurel Bank Road, it seems very straight. And there are actually a number of buildings along, along that road. If you were to take the yellow star right out to uh, the right hand side of the map, Right out to the periphery, there would be several buildings uh, uh, fronting onto that stretch of road. 
Could I have Darren's comments on that, please, Chair? Yeah, yeah. Just to, to be clear, members, the map, uh, as I say, there's been comments about the inaccuracy of the map. Um, the uh, grey rectangle, that's beside the 88.3 that you can see on the drawing. Uh, that, you know, those buildings are no longer there, um, but they don't need to be. The critical question for you, members, today is does number 140 have a frontage onto the road? And that property reads with number 30 and number 26. That's all you need. So don't don't worry about any, how many there are elsewhere. The critical thing is number 140. So does it have a frontage onto the public road? And then read with number 30 and number 26 to be three buildings along a road. Uh, and as the officer's view is that it doesn't, the agent's view is that it does. Okay, Josephine, uh, we'll move on. Councillor Feely, Anthony. Thank you, thank you, Chair, and thank you, everybody, for the presentations there. Yeah, I'm just coming on the exact same thing as Josephine there about this 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 um, road. Uh, there was other photographs there, wasn't there? Can we see them again, um, yeah. Robert? Uh, I'll, I'll make sure a bit clear. It's a tricky one, you know, sure. same as Josephine. I'm just... Yeah. Let me see if I can just go through them again. So that's the view from the junction, looking down the Laurel Bank Road. Uh, that's the Laurel Bank Road is on the left, and the Ballinahaddy Road on the right. And then that's number 30. And then if you go down the road, obviously, towards number 26 and looking back up again. So you can see the gap between number 26 and number 30 with the sites in the middle. And as you travel along the road. So that's number 140 members. Um, I say that has the frontage on to two sides of the Ballinahaddy Road with the frontage there where the driveway comes in. And then this is the side. Uh, unfortunately, members, I can only apologize. Uh, it, it, the photograph doesn't swing far enough left to show yeah. uh, the view yeah. down towards yeah. the Laurel Bank Road. Um, uh, it wasn't a deliberate attempt to hide any evidence from you. Um, and what, uh, was, what road is that coming out of there, Darren? See that that's on the Ballinahaddy. That's right. If okay. I go back up, just so so you see the yellow star. Yeah. You can see number one hundred and forty. There's two purple arrows. So the purple arrow heading out to the left of number one hundred and forty is their front driveway. And then the purple arrow going to the bottom is the pedestrian okay. gate, and you can see the wee triangle, which has yeah. the word access written on it. Right. So I just show you. So that's the property. That's the frontage to the left of the house, according to the map. And then that's the frontage to the bottom. Part of the map, so you can see there's a uh, it's a pedestrian gate obviously coming out onto the Ballinahaddy Road, so it would have a frontage on two sides. Yeah, yeah, thanks and for that. Time. Thanks, Anthony. Members, any further questions for Darren? Councillor Coyle, John, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, no, Darren. Uh, Hattie Road um, comes and sweeps up to if you're uh, past uh, where the gates is there, that comes out and it turns up right. If that was a T junction uh, and Laurel Bank Road ran on straight, uh, you know, to me it seems it run it runs you know runs along uh, straight. Uh, I went and I checked on uh, Google just for to get um, you know the lay of the land, and it seems that's a straight piece of road. It just the the uh, you know that grey grey kind of house that's up near the turn up. Um, a view might have been better of sure of that because it does read you know all in the one. But I, uh, the Valley Hattie Road, it's, uh, I don't know what way it was designed or whatever, but it's, it's, uh, it's a tricky one. I don't know what to, um, you know, I take both sides on at this stage, but the pedestrian access just down maybe, um, that is a common frontage onto Valley Hattie Road, just to confirm, thanks. Members, uh, this isn't, and I'm sorry, I'm cutting across, Darren. Yeah. This is not an uncommon instance uh, throughout um, the Fermanagh and Oma District Council area. There is one such instance just outside my village of Lisbelaw, where there's a Tatty McCall road um, and it breaks 
and you start another road. But the, the, the straight road that goes on on the T-junction is the split road name, Carrow Keel Road. So it does happen um, and has happened. A lot of it's got to do, I think, with uh, traffic movements and where the priorities have gone. Um, but that's just a bit of historical information. Any further questions? Right, we're at the time where we have to have proposals uh, in regard. You've heard the agent, you've heard the objectors, uh, you've heard Councillor McCann in support of the agent, and you've heard Darren uh, in regard to rebuttal evidence. So, Councillor Deacon, Josephine. Thank you, Chair. Well, Chair, I have listened uh, very carefully uh, to the presentations. And I uh, am mindful of the representations, very heartfelt from the objector. And I note uh, that the planning officer, Darren, uh, has informed the committee uh, that uh, all the planning requirements have been met in terms of the impact of uh, development of uh, this, these sites on neighbours and that uh, the planning officer is satisfied that there will be no detrimental impact on the living amenity of neighbouring properties, and I accept that. Uh, for, me, for me, Chair, the crux of the matter is whether or not there is common uh, 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 road frontage with a minimum of three buildings along that common frontage. And... Um, uh, there is no doubt in my mind, Chair, that there is common frontage along the Balnahati Road leading into uh, the Laurel Bank Road. And I think that that stretch of the Balnahati Road could just as easily have been called the Laurel Bank Road. Looking at the photographs presented uh, uh, by the planning officer, uh, you can, it is clearly demonstrated uh, that there is substantial frontage from number 40 and a pedestrian access onto that stretch of the Balnahati Road. So therefore, I am satisfied that the planning policy is met. I'm satisfied that there is a common frontage of three buildings along uh, uh, that stretch of road. Uh, I believe that the application then fulfills the policy test that it is a suitable uh, infill site that the site can accommodate two dwellings and garages. And hence, I wish to propose that we do not accept the planning officer's recommendation uh, for the reasons I have stated and that we should instead uh, uh, approve this planning application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Josephine. Uh, Anthony, Councillor Peeler. Yeah, I would be. I would um, second Josephine's proposal. There. I was just thinking exactly same as Josephine, but wouldn't have been fit to articulate it as well as that. So, uh, just second Josephine's proposal. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other proposals? Josephine, if you could, um, Councillor Rainey, were you putting your hand up? Yep, Councillor Rainey, Alan. Well, Chair and uh, fellow members, uh, it really is maybe somewhat complicated, whether it's Laura Bank Road or Balnahati Road, but uh, it's uh, a road that I am pretty familiar with, and the Balnahati Road is certainly one with a number of sweeping bends on it, and it does turn uh, right or left at that junction and it leaves the Laura Bank Road clearly and distinctly a, a road on its own. And there are only two uh, houses that on it. So therefore, um, I have to, at this time, agree with the, the planning officer uh, and, uh, and propose that uh, we go with the, with the uh, recommendation, recommendation from yeah. That's okay. Thank you very much indeed, Alan. Uh, do I maybe, have a second? Maybe, maybe that's a dir direct opposite, but anyway, you'll deal with that. No, I'll deal with that. Don't worry indeed. Do I have a seconder for Councillor Zerini's proposal?
Nobody seconding? Right. I've got one proposal, and that's um, to go against the officer's recommendation and to go for an approval, and that's been proposed by Councillor Day and seconded by Councillor Feeley. Uh, I'm putting that to members. Could anybody, uh, sorry, are we all agreed? If not, indicate otherwise. I presume, Councillor Rainey, you're going against that uh, from the chair. I'm not agreeing with that as well. I'm going against that. Any others not in agreement? Right, I take it then that only Councillor Rainey and I do not agree with that proposal. All others agree. Could you sum up, Kim, then, in regard to who's for and who's against? Chair, so the proposal to go against the officer's recommendation from Councillor Deacon, supported by Councillor Feely, has been supported by uh, Councillors Campbell, Coyle, Dehan, Donnelly, Feely, Garrity. Uh, is Councillor McGuire here? Yes, yes Councillor McGuire and Councillor Robinson. And uh, uh, against that proposal were Councillor Irvine and Councillor Rainey. Thank you very much indeed. Darren? Uh, okay, members, so the recommendation then was to refuse planning permission uh, for the reason listed within the report uh, and subject to the four reasons. Uh, members have decided that the application meets the planning policy uh, and it is an appropriate infill within a small gap uh, along a substantially and continuously built up frontage. As a result of that, the reasons two, three and four uh, are no longer relevant because it is an infill opportunity. Uh, just to clarify that as, as a matter for record. Uh, in terms of conditions, um, members, if you're content uh, with suggested conditions uh, that the dwellings are bungalows, so a six metre ridge uh, setting as per concept plan uh, with no windows facing the gables uh, on towards the neighbouring properties. Uh, levels and cross sections are submitted uh, as part of the reserved matters. Uh, all landscaping is retained where possible unless necessary to create access and visibility displays and new planting is proposed. Uh, with new planting along the side boundaries uh, uh, to uh, screen the house and screen the property further. Standard roads conditions and standard conditions in terms of commencement uh, and the submission of the reserve matters. Thank you very much, Darren. All happy with that? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go on now uh, to item six on the agenda, and that's to note the schedule of planning decisions issued in March 2021. Paper B. Could I have a proposer and seconder to note, please? Oppose Councillor Coyle. Second Councillor Robinson. All agreed. Agreed. Thank you. We'll go on now to item seven. That's to note the update report on planning enforcement, March 2021, paper C. Uh, if you have any questions, please pose them. If not, could I have a proposer and seconder to adopt? So, Rainey. Councillor Rainey and Councillor Garrity second. All agreed? Agreed, thank you. Go on now to item eight uh, on the agenda, and that's to consider planning appeals update for March 2021, Paper D. Sinead, do you want to say anything on that before we take a proposal? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, just, yep, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I suppose just to note, um, obviously, that, that both appeals, um, they were presented um, with, obviously, reasons to refuse in both cases. Um, and that just to, to note that um, both both decisions were um, upheld insofar as that both appeals were dismissed by the Planning Appeals Commission. Thank you very much. Any questions for Sinead? No, could a proposer and seconder to uh, note. Councillor Robinson proposing and Councillor Dehan seconding. Thank you very much. All agreed? Agreed. Great. Thank you. Yep. Go on now to item nine, and that's to consider the quarterly update on live planning case load report paper E. Any questions? No, I'll have a proposer and seconder to note, please. Councillor McGuire, just saw you reaching there. Thank you very much, Tommy. A seconder, please. Councillor Feely, thank you. 
I see that right index finger. Well done. Or is it the left? I can't remember which it is. All agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, on to item 10, that's to, to consider planning performance, third quarter statistical reports, paper F. Any questions? I think we do note that we're, we're not hitting uh, the targets, but that's due to, again, COVID. We're very close, but just not over the line yet, and we are getting there. So could I have a proposal and seconder to adopt, please? Councillor Coyle, so, I see oh, sure. Councillor Rainey, uh, seconded by Councillor Dehan. All agreed? Yep, thank you. On to item 11, we have one item of correspondence, and that's really correspondence from the Department for Infrastructure in regard to an updated definition of affordable housing. Anybody got any queries on that? It's fairly straightforward. Right, thank you. Could I have a proposer to note? Councillor Garrity, Mary, thanks. And Councillor Robinson, Paul, thank you. All agreed? Great. Item 12, nobody has informed me of any urgent and relevant business. And that said, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Uh, we got Thank through it reasonably you. well. Yeah. And um, I'll see you next month. Thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.